Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to find your reading taste, whether you're relatively new to trying to get into reading or if you've just found that recently the books that you used to pick up aren't really interesting you anymore. Here's some tips on what might help you find what you're looking for. But before we get into that, a sponsored unboxing. So Book of the Month is a subscription that helps people to discover the best new release, early release, and debut adult fiction books. They offer five new release books every month and members get to pick one to be shipped to their home or if they want more, in addition to one of their featured boxes, members can add up to two featured books, trending books, or previous books as add-ons to their monthly purchase. And members can skip a month anytime they want with no penalty. So for the books for March, we have The Final Revival of Opal and Nev. For fans of Daisy Jones and the Six, a rollicking tale with equal parts rock and roll and black feminist punk spirit. What's mine is yours. With warmth and empathy, this multi-generational novel traces the lives of two family in a divided Southern community. This one looks interesting to me. Too good to be true. Unsettling and twisted, this creepy thriller will make you wonder which of its narrators is telling the truth. Also interested in this one. In a book club far away, estranged friends reconnect to heal past wounds in this heartwarming story of friendship, forgiveness, and army life. The Lost Apothecary. Forget healing salves and soothing tinctures. This apothecary specializes in one thing, helping women fight back. Also interested in this one. So head over to bookofthemonth.com to get your first books and your first month is only $9.99 with the code, which will be linked in the description of this video. Okay, first tip for finding what you might want to read or might enjoy reading if you keep picking up stuff that you're not liking or are trying to get into reading relatively recently. Something that might work out for you is to examine the books that you have enjoyed and decide what it is about them that made you enjoy them. I'm not just talking about genres. Sure, maybe every book you pick up that you love is a murder mystery and every book that you pick up that you hate is a fantasy. If that's the case, pick up more murder mystery. Blech. I'm talking about going a little bit deeper than that. Uh, there may be certain themes within the stories that you love that make you love them. Maybe you keep picking up the same genre and some of them are hits and some of them are big misses and you can't figure out why. Really try to look in and examine what is it that's making you love the book? What is it that's sticking with you about the book? Is it the characters? Is it the fact that the characters feel really genuinely real in your favorite books and they feel kind of hollow and as... Um, concepts less than real humans in the books that you don't love? Is it the themes within the stories that are making you fall in love with them? Maybe there are certain topics that certain stories focus on that make you fall in love. I have found that I really love books that focus on a topic and dig into that topic, like grief, like familial relationships, like mental health. And it doesn't have to be literary fiction. I do love literary fiction. My favorite author of all time is Frederick Bachman, but I also love Pet Cemetery, which is a horror novel, but there's a very intentional focus on grief throughout it. I love Brandon Sanderson, who is an epic fantasy writer, but his fixation on mental health is just as important as the world and the magic. In fact, most of my favorite books, favorite stories, favorite series, favorite authors, put a big focus on something underneath the story that we can discuss. That's something that I've really, really found I enjoy. Maybe you find that you love books that have really, really fast pacing or books that focus on an incredibly immersive environment, something where you feel like you can see and taste everything that's being described to you. Or maybe you find that you don't care about characters, you don't care about themes, you don't care about writing style. You want a really fast paced, fun ride to escape into. All these things will help you have buzzwords, have ideas of what kind of focus to be looking for in books. 
My second tip is to do the same with other forms of media. Maybe you haven't read a lot of books that you've loved, but you do happen to like movies. Not only can you also dissect what it is that you love about certain movies, but there are a lot of books that can correlate with your favorite movies as well. You can still assess if it's the pacing, the character, the themes, the environment within movies that you love and then move that into books. But it also totally works to pick out a movie that you love, maybe your favorite movie or one of your favorites, and then find a book that looks really similar. If your favorite movies have been adapted from books, reading the book after the movie is actually a really great way to ease into reading. I've had multiple people that have converted into readers by telling them, hey, your favorite movie was it adapted from a book, read the book, you'll get more from it. And I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying that the movie, in order to fit within the two hour span, has to cut certain things, whether it be certain character elements, whether it be some complete side plot or uh, just a longer extension of certain really great scenes. Try not to sound elitist here because genuinely it's fine if you like movies more. I'm just saying it's different. So experience a story you love in another format and you may find that it's a really easy way to transition into that other format. But even if a movie hasn't been adapted from a book, you can still do this. You love The Godfather? Maybe you should pick up, hang on, a book that plays on the same tropes as The Godfather and also has that very slow, deliberate pacing with the close interpersonal familial ties and uh, uh, same drug war sort of themes within it. That might work out for you. It's a totally different story, but it's playing on the same tropes and themes, so you may like it. You're a fan of Ocean's Eleven and Leverage? Maybe, possibly, you should pick up a heist book. Actually, there's tons of heist books. There's so many. You should pick them up. My third tip is to pick up books outside of your comfort zone. I know for me, I have gotten into reading ruts. I've always been a reader, but every now and then I'll read so much of one genre that I get a little bit of burnout from that genre. And now I'm picking up stuff that I have always enjoyed, but I'm just so tired of it anymore. And so I feel like I've fallen out of love with reading, but really I just need a break from the same thing that I keep reading. One really great way to do this is to pick up books that your friends or family members have loved. I used to think that I didn't like fantasy. I used to think that that was a genre that I didn't want to read. And then my brother did not ask me to read Mistborn, did not tell me to read Mistborn, forced me <laughs> to read Mistborn, I'm being dramatic, but the man wouldn't stop texting me until I started the daggum book. And I knew it was fantasy and I knew I wouldn't like it, but I wanted him to get off my case. And do you know that I love fantasy so much? A lot of times just getting recommendations from people that you know and trust can lead you to the right books for you within a genre that maybe you've tried before, but you were just picking up the wrong ones. And if you don't have friends or family members that read, I promise you there is an entire online community that will happily oblige in book recommendations. Spend a lot of time on Instagram. There are Instagram accounts dedicated to recommending books to you. Waste your whole day on YouTube? Hi, me too. There's a lot of us here. Big fan of blogs? Book blogs are a thing as well. There are so many bookish people that are dying to talk about books. We don't make ourselves too hard to find. One really useful thing is to search genres that you know you love or books you know you love and find other bookish people that love the same things as you and then go from there. Just by simply searching for a review for your favorite stories or for a recommendation list for your favorite genres, you can find people who have similar bookish taste to you and then follow their recommendations for books that you haven't read yet. Another really great option for finding books that you may not have heard about or wouldn't have tried otherwise is through your favorite authors. Finding a book you love and then reading that entire author's archive can be really fun, but eventually 
you catch up to them. It's faster to read a book than to write one. What do you do now? Most authors, somewhere within a blog post or their website or on an interview, something that you can find through a Google search, have listed their own personal favorite authors, the inspirations that they, that they have used in their writing or their favorite stories that year. Following the recommendations of the people that you already trust can lead to some really terrible books but also some really good ones. And my final tip is to DNF or did not finish, quit books you don't like. If you find a book to be particularly boring or just not fitting your taste, not, not something that you're liking, you can stop reading. I promise it's okay. Yes, if you push through to the end, you may find that you liked it in the end or more likely you won't. There are so many great books out there. Don't waste your time on something you don't like. And I understand it's really hard to quit on a book that you've spent 15, 20, $25 on, depending on how much of a new release it is. It's difficult to read three chapters and then say, well, that was money out the door. That is why libraries and secondhand shops are your friend. If libraries are accessible in your area, they are incredible for cover buys or cover borrows. Look through the shelves, find a pretty cover, find a title that looks neat, read a back description or a blurb that sounds interesting, sit down, read a few chapters, and if it's not, if it's not your fancy, chuck it out the window. Don't do that, it's someone else's book, that's rude. But stop reading it. Pick up the next book in your pile. Try something else. If libraries aren't accessible, try secondhand shops. You can buy a stack of books for 50 cents or a dollar a piece. You haven't wasted that much money if you decide not to waste your time. So there you go. Those are some of my tips for establishing your reading taste, whether you're new to reading or you find yourself in a bit of a lull and are looking to try something new. Hopefully one or a couple of these tips will help you get there. I personally have used these many times as I find myself in a lull and I love it. I'd love to hear what works for you when you are trying to switch things up, trying to find new books. Are there any of these things that do work for you, don't work for you, and what's something that I haven't mentioned that you've tried and has been useful? And if you're looking for book recommendations based off of some other media that you've enjoyed, leave that in the comments too. We're readers here. We like recommending things. And check out my Patreon if you wanna to get tons of book recommendations and also participate in buddy reads with me and a bunch of other really awesome people. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon. Bye.